Hello my friend, long time no see. This is the final part of this video series. In this video, we'll be putting together everything that we have learned in part 1 and part 2 to create an experience to find a dino in your space using some portal magic. Here is the link for the first part where I have covered how to add 2D and 3D content into your windows and volumes. And here is the link for the second part where I have covered how to add 2D and 3D content to your immersive spaces. So please go check it out. Now let's go and find some dinos in your space, shall we? Alright, so now let's take a look at this find a dino view and what's it about. So when I click on find a dino, a magnifying glass kind of loads. I'll move this on the side. You can see that it's a magnifying glass that has a portal on it. So I can move the magnifying glass and find dinosaurs in this view. So imagine that this is in your space and using this magnifying glass, you're kind of looking into a different world to find dinosaurs, right? This is a magical tool that you have in your belt. Um, when you hover over a dinosaur, you see a hover effect on it. When you click on it, it tells you the name of the dinosaur and some description of it. You can do the same thing. Oh, I have found a different dinosaur now. Let me click on it. Oh, it's a Velociraptor. You can see its description, right? Are there more dinosaurs to find? Oh, what is the giant one? Is that a T-Rex? So you can click on it. It says it's a T-Rex. You get its description here. So it's a fun game that lets you explore different dinosaurs and get some information. And the cool part is you're finding these dinosaurs in your own space. So we are going to take a look at how this was made. So to create this find a dino experience, what we are doing is we are creating a world with all the dinosaurs and then uh, we are going to set up this world and then we are going to make sure that we can see this world through a portal and then we are making the portal a child of the magnifying glass. So as we move it, we simply uh, see the dinosaurs and when we click on the dinosaurs, that we can find it okay so we can start a little bit simpler so first let's just see like how this world was actually created so you can see that here i have commented these two lines that kind of add the skybox and the dinos to the world and directly add the skybox and the dinos to our content and this is what you see i've used this to position the dinosaurs at the appropriate position i've scaled them appropriately and i also rotated them to my liking so the scene is set up Okay, so you can see that my dinos also have like a hover effect component on them. So I have set up the dinos like that. Okay, and then I have also set up environment lighting for all my dinosaurs. And uh, you can uh, you can see that the portal is now empty because there is no nothing that is a child of that world component yet. So um, let's see first how this was made. So you can see first thing I'm doing is loading the uh, partially cloudy skybox texture as an IBL here. The only thing I'm diff doing differently here is I'm saving it in, an, uh, in a state variable right here at the very top. Then I'm creating the skybox again. Uh, and uh, what I'm doing, I'm simply adding the skybox to my reality view content directly. And then I have this function called load all dinos that essentially creates the entities for all the dinosaur models and loads them. So let's take a look at the load all dinos function. The load all dinos function essentially creates an empty entity, adds all the dinosaurs as a child of it and returns this all dinos. So let's see how the dinosaurs are loaded. I do this for each and every single model. So it will be the same and repetitive for all. So I'll just go through one. Um, so let's check for the Brachiosaurus. What I'm doing is I'm loading it from our reality kit content bundle. I'm setting a name for this entity here. We'll talk about it why in a bit, but this is for our find a dino experience. So I'm assigning a name here to the entity. We have not done this before, but here I'm manually doing it. I'm setting its position and scale and rotation to my liking. Uh, and I'm adding it as a child of this entity. I'm doing it for all dinos. Then we have done this before. I'm setting an image based light component and image based light com receiver component on this dinosaur. 
and I'm also adding couple new things now. I am adding an input target component and also adding a collision component by setting its box size where I want collision bounds to be for each dinosaur. Then I'm also adding a hover effect component that kind of gives them this glowing effect as I hover over these dinosaurs. Okay, so one thing to note here is that how do you get idea of like what should be the size of your collision component? So again, Xcode can help you with this. So if you click on the debug visualization and if you enable the collision shapes and axis, so Xcode can help you get an idea of like what is the actual size of the collision box that surrounds the dinosaur and you can tweak it by just experimenting with these values. And then after I've done that, I'm basically playing available animations again, repeating them. So that's how I do it. I have done this for all the dinosaurs that are loaded here that you can see. So that kind of loads all the dinosaurs. What we are going to do is we are going to add our skybox and the dinos to a world. So I am going to create a world here that you can see that it's a world and I'm, I have a dino world, I have a world component on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add our skybox and all the dinos as children. To this world. Now I'm going to create a portal and going to say that I want the target of this portal uh, to be the dino world that we just created. So we can only see this dino world from this portal that we have just created. Okay and then I have basically set an initial transform. Uh, I have rotated it 90 degrees on the x-axis so the portal kind of faces us instead of pointing upwards, facing upwards. And I'm adding it to our content of the reality view. So that kind of sets up the portal. We have done this before, right? Now let's get into how we can set up the magnifying glass and uh, how we can create like a search experience associated with it. All right, to figure out how this whole magnifying glass thing is set up, uh, we'll have to jump into Reality Composer Pro. So let's do that. So I created this uh, magnifying glass scene right here. I found the magnifying glass asset from the Reality Kids content library, right? So if you just look into this library in the, with this plus button, if you search for magnifying glass, it shows you uh, this asset. If you search for it, you simply load it in your project. Uh, let's take a look at it. So this is the asset. There are a couple things to look here. You can see that this asset has like a uh, glass um, material over here. So I don't really want that for my portal. So what I did was first, um, I started with the magnifying glass asset. So I am going to take it outside of its hierarchy right now. Let's put it at the way bottom, okay? So you can see that this is my magnifying glass asset. I went into it. Um, and then I simply deleted it's like uh, the glass part of it. I removed that part of the mesh and then what I did was I created a cube. I positioned the cube uh, right about at where the handle of the magnifying glass is. Um, then on this cube, I added a input target and a collision component. So this is the most important thing to keep in mind. I am not adding an input target and collision component on the entire magnifying glass. If you do this, your spatial tap gesture will not go through the lens. You have to make sure that your, uh, your input target and collision component is only at the bottom of it. Now, since my gestures for manipulating this magnifying glass are going to happen only on this cube, I made sure the actual model of the magnifying glass is a child of this cube now. Okay, so when now this thing gets manipulated, the whole magnifying glass moves. Okay, 
I created a portal anchor where my portal is going to be attached and I kind of sort of placed it right where the center of this glass is. So what I'm going to do is when this glass loads, I'm going to make the portal as a child of this anchor. Now let's jump back into Xcode. So what's happening in our reality view now that we are loading our magnifying glass scene. So if you look into, uh, so this is our magnifying glass scene. We are loading that as an entity. Then we are finding an entity named magnifying glass, which is going to be this cube that we created. Keep in mind that it's not the actual model for it. We are basically looking for the cube that has the collider component on it. So that's exactly what we are loading. We are going to save this entity uh, in our view so that we can reuse it for gestures. Uh, but we are simply adding this magnifying glass that we have now found into our reality views content. I'm going to put, give an initial position to the magnifying glass and an initial scale. Then I'm going to basically go and find the portal anger which was defined right here and the name should match. And here, what I'm going to do is find it and add our portal that we previously created as a child of this anchor. So that essentially creates our magnifying glass. So now for showing the text that you see here for our name here and then the information, what I've done is I have created two attachments. So one is the name of Dino and one is the Dino info here. So two attachments. So I am loading the name of Dino uh, first, the name label. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it as a child of our portal. So this thing moves with our Dino, with our magnifying glass. So just making it a child kind of does that effect. So we've created our attachments. You can see that I'm also loading the dinosaur description in the same way, but here I'm just adding it to the content. So it doesn't move, it just stays at the same place. Uh, so that kind of sends up the UI for the project, right? The labels and the panel or the text and the magnifying glass. Two things are left. How did we actually do the whole like manipulating of the glass? So we look at that now. So there are two things we still need to look at. And the first one is that how do we manipulate our magnifying glass so that we can search and how do we do this effect where when we click it kind of finds the name and kind of updates the description. Uh, it's all game of gestures. We are setting up two gestures on our reality view. So first let's look at what is the gesture we are using for manipulating. We are basically saying that uh, we want to use a drag gesture. We are specifically telling it that we want it to be targeted to only one entity, which is our magnifying glass. This is the only reason why we saved our magnifying glass here so that we can basically uh, reaccess it again when we check for the gestures, right? So you're basically saying here, when there is a drag gesture uh, that is applied to our, uh, that is basically targeted to my magnifying glass, when its value is changed, uh, I am setting the position of the magnifying glass right here. There is an interesting effect here that you should pay attention to, which is you can see that the glass is also rotating as I turn it. To create this effect, I have done something simple as a hack. Um, so I have defined a dummy camera position that is at 0, 1, 0. And then I'm basically doing on the magnifying glass entity a look at transform. And what it does, it updates the glasses uh, orientation to always look at the camera. So this camera position is a static position that doesn't update. So when you run this on the headset, it will feel broken. Uh, what you need to do is use ARKit to get the camera's updating position each frame. You're creating the camera position as a state variable at the top of the view and make sure you update it at each ARKit update cycle and then you kind of set it. So when now you call the look at function, 
the look at will look at the updated camera position and always orient the magnifying glass in the right way. This causes a problem to happen. So when you do that, uh, the forward vector of your magnifying glass is pointing uh, to the camera. So your magnifying glass is essentially flipped. So the portal kind of faces behind and which becomes a problem. So you want to turn the portal by 180 degrees so it's positioned correctly. And that's exactly what this line of code is doing. It's getting the port uh, portal anchor and it's basically flipping it by 180 degrees on the y-axis. So now it's positioned correctly again. Now for Vision OS 2, uh, Apple added this awesome thing called billboard component. So if you add it directly to your magnifying glass or your um, dyno viewing portal, this handles this whole like look rotation so you don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is modify the position of the magnifying glass and the orientation will be taken care of by the billboard component. This is only available for Vision OS 2. So let's take a quick look at how this is done in Vision OS 2. This is a separate project that I have tested this with on Vision OS 2. So uh, keep this in mind is that you can simply set a billboard component on your magnifying glass once you find it. And when you do a drag gesture on it, you don't have to write any sort of like look at code for it. You simply set the position of the magnifying glass entity and the view should take care of like orienting the glass as your head moves. So you can see that as I'm moving up, it kind of like faces me all the time. And that's kind of like the awesome effect that you can get by simply adding this billboard component, uh, but only for Vision OS 2. So this won't work for Vision OS 1.0. We still need to look at how we are creating this effect of clicking on the dinosaur and getting this name and the description updated. So we're using a spatial tab gesture here, okay? So we are doing this targeted to any entity and basically we are saying that when this gesture happens, we are getting the name of dino as the entity's name so you can see that when we are loading dinos we set the name of the entity here that's the reason why we set it so when we click on the dino its name is loaded in a string straight variable of name of dino and then at the very top i have set up a dictionary where when you pass it a name of dino it loads the description for a dino and that is set to this another string state variable so when the tab gesture happens, these two state variables get updated and you can see that our attachments kind of get updated with the new description. Uh, you can see the dictionary is right over here. And these are the two state variables we are simply adding text to. So when they get updated after the spatial tab gestures, we kind of see them over here. That brings us to the end of this video series. I really hope you learned a thing or two from it. Model 3D and Reality View make it really easy to add 3D content to your Windows volumes and spaces. You can use Model 3D when you want to simply load a model and maybe animate its transform. You can consider using Reality View when you want more granular controls such as controlling the lighting on the model, playing baked animations, etc. With Reality View, you can also incorporate your models into a system and do more with it. I have some really exciting tutorials coming real soon, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on the next one. See you real soon. Ciao.